Hello, I'm Cliff Little with OSU Extension. I work in agriculture and natural resources in Guernsey and Noble Counties. I'm also the Ohio Forage Team co-leader. In this presentation, we're going to be covering forage testing of round and square bales. Why forage test? Because there are significant differences in forage quality and value. If you're purchasing hay, you could buy a higher quality. And if you're selling hay, you can differentiate your product. In addition, if you're in agriculture and feeding livestock, well then you could feed the best quality hay to the animals that need it. What about price value differences? If you look at the energy protein, calcium and phosphorus in forages, and put a price on that, it's easy to compare the value in forages in terms of the nutrients they have in them. And you can see as high as a $200 difference per ton in the value of forages. And I ask you, can you guess the true value of forages based strictly on visual observations? It's difficult to do. We often have in classes bags of forages in which we have analysis on. And we all ask farmers to judge them. But understanding the true value difference in terms of dollars is difficult without an analysis. What factors influence forage quality? The number one influence is maturity. The older plants get in terms of development, and by that I mean if they produce a seed head, they're becoming very mature. And that will be true for both legumes and grasses. The more mature they become, the less digestible they become. Storage impacts forage quality. The longer hay is stored, the, the more it deteriorates. So age is a factor. Legume content. Generally, legumes are of higher quality. Alfalfas, clovers, of higher nutritional value. Weed content. Lots of weeds in hay may reduce its nutritional content, particularly if they're stemmy and lignified. They may be undigestible. Fertility, a good fertility program. Liming, phosphorus, potassium applications, and nitrogen all have the ability to influence forage quality. How do you take a forage test? It's very simple, really. What you see in this photo is a picture of a forage test probe. You can obtain these from many extension offices. They're fairly expensive tools and this probe is attached to a hand brace. This probe would be utilized for square bales, round bales, round silage, uh, even could be used in bunker silos if it were tightly packed. This probe also has with it a dowel rod and that dowel rod is used to go down through the bit end. We detach the bit from the brace and take the forward sample out. To sample, we have to sample a representative sample. It's much like soil testing. That sample has to represent a group or a lot of hay. And that might be a first cutting off of, I say here, field one, for example. It could be second cutting. It could be another field that was just composed of legumes. And then we have to take a representative sample from that lot of hay and send it into the laboratory. Here's an example of that. We have a first cutting hay up in the upper left hand corner of square bales. Out of one field, this would be a lot of hay that we would sample. Again, in the right hand side, we have round bale hay taking off of a different field at a different time of year. So that would be a second lot of hay to be sampled separately. And then down below you see some silage bales. Another different type of forage put up at a different stage in its maturity out of a different field. We would again sample it separately. Here's how we actually do the sample. So on the picture you saw on the previous slide, we had square bales, and now we're drilling into the rounded end of the square bale. And we're going to take out of that lot of hay 15 to 20 core samples. And these are 
fairly tightly packed bales, we're going to drill in at least half the depth of that tube to the full depth. We're then going to take that forge sample, take the bit off of the hand brace, and empty the contents into a clean plastic bucket. And we'll do that for 15 to 20 bales, making sure that the subsample we take from this lot of hay is representative of what we might be feeding the livestock. We're going to combine all these samples, mix them up thoroughly, and you're actually going to only be sending in about two pints of this to the laboratory. So representing your lot of hay is important. You really can't take enough samples um, when you're sampling forage and before you send it into the laboratory. Here's some round bales of hay. They're net wrapped. What we do on round bales of hay, particularly if they're stored outside, sometimes even if they're stored inside, they can have some spoilage on the outside of the bale. First you peel off any of that spoilage, getting down to the good hay. We drill towards the center or the core of the bale of that hay. And in this lot of hay you see here, off of this cutting, we're going to sample 10 or 12 bales and combine those in that clean plastic bucket again mix those up and send them into the laboratory. And that drill bit we're going in the full depth into the center of that bale, getting us a good representative sample. You can also, by the way, attach these bits to electric drills, cordless, or drills with cords on them if you have enough extension cord. It's very easy though to drill in with a good sharp bit on the end of that drill. For silage bales, also pretty simple to do. We simply cut a slit in the side of the bale. We peel it back, again remove spoilage, drill into the center of the bale, sampling 10 or 12 bales at random from this lot, and we take some gray tape and seal that bale back up and combine those samples in a clean plastic bucket to send into the laboratory. This is a picture of some of the material that came out of the actual forage test probe. You can see once it goes through that bit, it grinds it fairly finely. And that is what you'll be combining in your bucket to send off to the laboratory. You want to time your forage analysis so that you do it at the beginning of the mail week. You don't want this sitting around in mail at a post office for a long period of time. The quicker you can get your product to a laboratory, the better your results of a fresh forage sample would be. And this is particularly important with silages. For more information on forage testing, contact your local extension office or refer to OSU Extension Publication NR002-98. Thank you.